Mai ji ji wau. It's a term that the crow have, the crow of Montana, refers to storytelling, the ability to tell the stories of coyote and the creation. But mai ji ji wau also refers to, literally translating, retelling one's own. We all have great stories, and thanks for that introduction. That was perfect setup. Each of you have a great story to tell, to transform. When something powerful happens in a person's life, there's a need to share it. When you had that experience that have changed you, you need to tell that story to understand what that transformation is all about so that others also know about what's changed in you. And just maybe in sharing your story, somebody will get inspired. Someone will take that little nugget and that will become part of their story. I've been fortunate over the many years to have had many great mentors and teachers, um, too many to really mention here, but Tom Yellowtail and his wife Susie Yellowtail of The Crow, Cliff Sijon and his wife Lori uh, of the Coeur d'Alene in Cayuse. They were great mentors for me over the years. Their stories of burnt face and the wheel, and this thing called Dashushua, breaking with the mouth, the power in story, not just to represent, the power in story to transform and create, the power of our words and our actions to affect the world. Working with, with Cliff, when we tell those stories, those stories, would, they would come alive with, with salmon and coyote, and they would swirl around us. These first peoples, these animal peoples, we would be with them in conversation. And he introduced to me the idea of heart knowledge. There's three little tidbits, three little stories that these gentlemen shared with me that I want to share with you that in turn have impacted my life. Burnt face. Um, there, over there. He's running. He's running, not careful where he plants his feet. And as he runs, falls into that fire pit, and all of the right side of his face is badly burnt. All of it burnt. Because of that, he isolates himself. He's ostracized. Doesn't participate. He is as if an orphan. And that's the way he lived his life, as Tom shared that story with me. And so one day, with the support of his family, he went to the mountain. He went up there to pray, to sacrifice, to give, to give of himself, to move some rocks around. That one there, there, to move them around while he was up there without food and water. Giving of himself, diagaji, doing it with determination, with his sincerity. And as it came, the awakuri, the little people, came to him and adopted him and took that which he had hated from his face. And he returned among his people, and by Ijijiwau, he shared that story with them. He, in turn, becoming a great Akbalia, a holy person, a medicine person. A little story. Heart knowledge. Um, Dashushua. New possibilities. When Cliff and so many elders worked with me, they talked about this thing called heart knowledge. I had been well-versed in head knowledge, um, with the great mentors around me, the uh, Aristotle um, and the empiricism that comes from looking at the material world in a very precise way, Rene Descartes and his Cartesian dualism. These great men helped bring forth the science we have today, the technology, the medicine, um, what we're doing today without them bringing forth that scientific method. But Cliff was talking about the swirling with salmon and coyote, talking about them and the power they would bring. And I was trying, when I talk about this for my students, when we talk about this, this heart knowledge, this, um, this ability to participate with the animal people, that they swirl around us, this idea that reality is an event, not an object, that it's transitory, made up of everyone participating. Reality is that moment of participation, your engagement with other humans, with plants, with animal, with spirit people. A very different understanding. And the closest thing I could get, imagine, what are the components, what are the participants of a rainbow? What brings a rainbow together 
to make a rainbow. You've got to have some moisture out there, right? Some molecules up there, that's part of it. They're participating. Might need some sunlight. I've got to have some sun. Doesn't happen too often in, the, in midnight, maybe. And who else do you need to create a rainbow? What's the ingredient? Who also has to be there for a rainbow to come into existence? You. You, a human being. You have to participate. Participate both through your eyes visually, but also through your cognition. You have a rainbow word. You're going to speak a word. You have a construct that helps create a meaningful experience. That at the end of the rainbow, there's that, going to be that pot of gold. There's a meaning attached to it, but only because you're participating. Reality becomes something possible, not fixed. Story becomes something possible, that which you speak, the possibility. When Burnt Face was up there on that mountain in the Bighorns, he moved rocks around, and you can see what he left as a gift to whomever would come to him this great medicine wheel, some 60 feet across, some 27 spokes, very special. And as I was working with Tom and Susie, for example, they lived the life of what this represents. Tom himself was a very powerful medicine man, an Akbalia. He ran the sun dances for the Crow people. He helped healing of others, and a great storyteller himself, as testified with the story of Burnt Face but they live the life of the wheel. They live the life of spokes, each of equal significance. Susie herself was in the Sundance, was a powerful aid in the Sundance, in the use of that type of reality to transform. But she's also the first American Indian registered nurse in this country. She knows Western biomedicine, and she could combine them and apply them both equally. Tom himself, um, a powerful indigenous healer, but he's also a devout Christian, a Baptist. He knows the Gospels as well as he knows the story of coyote and salmon and burnt face and the power of that. So I have taken in my life, because of these teachings, burnt face and transformed my classroom what I teach and the various applications of that, um, and in the research I do, taking that heart knowledge, taking that, that story of burnt face, and when you look at that story of burnt face, the orphan, the journey, the gifts, you have rites of passage. What a great, great storyline to help you understand changes in your life. And having experienced these great stories, when I face a challenge in my life, as we all face challenges, how deep do we dig to find out the right stories to help guide us through that challenge, to navigate that? Several years ago, my son became extremely ill. And I just reached out as a 25-year-old parent wanting to help him. And I'd vowed to go up on the hill to give of myself without food and water for three days for him, for his life. And that was a great event, and it led me with an invitation to continue that prayer in the Sundance. So the Sundance has become part of who I am, that religious orientation that I was introduced to, that journey to the mountain, offering one's diagogy, that sincerity, traveling the path of a burnt face for my son. He recovered. And uh, that's great. We all have challenges more personally. And 30 years later, I had cancer. I had third stage cancer. I thought I was healthy. And I began a journey with cancer. And it relapsed again three years later. And I had this conversation with Cliff. He, he brought me back here. He said, you know, Fry, knowing who you are, you've got to really grab a hold of head knowledge. You've got to take care of yourself with head knowledge. You've got an oncologist, that chemo, that radiation, and in my case, a stem cell transplant. It was a, a powerful journey. But trust them. That head knowledge will serve you well. But Fry, knowing who you are, you also have to pay attention to heart knowledge. 
You've got, and that's where you can do something. That's the story you have to tell as you go on this journey with cancer. That pulsating fire is that journey to the mountain, offering diagogic, using burnt face to guide you through that, turns out, some four years of, with the relapse and the cancer. And throughout it all, I was aware of the fact that seemingly this heart knowledge and what it represented was very different than the head knowledge. How could that be? How could I use both effectively? Aren't they mutually exclusive? Head knowledge, heart knowledge, mutually exclusive. And I ask the question, when can two parallel lines, you probably have heard this one before, each with their own end become a singular line? When can that absolutely happen? And of course, that's the Mobius strip. Just twisting that little piece of paper around, creating a singular line where seemingly they had been mutually exclusive, parallel to each other. And I'm reminded of the Taoist symbol, a yin and yang, and how that puts together. And of course, the wheel itself was the answer to how I can put together what seemed to be two mutually exclusive realities, heart knowledge and head knowledge, and make them work for the success of, of my journey, and hopefully for your journey as well. Um, the doctors and nurses um, and my Sundance family, each working hand in hand as Tom in his life and Susie in her life had worked different realities together. Each has spoke. Tom saw this great world in which there are many, many differences. And those differences are each significant and to be respected as representing singular spokes with their own traditions. All of equal value. One spoke doesn't dominate another. And if that wheel is to turn, it has to be linked by that common hub. Um, and whatever that might be, empathy, the creator, however you put that together, allows us to have that, that, that power. So just finishing off here, the power of story. And we'll go back to Sam and one of the first peoples. Um, up at Lapway Creek, we can see the uh, eggs and the, and the little ones, the fry. And, and as that story unfolds, uh, the salmon from that little creek going down river, that clear water um, into the ocean, going from fresh water to seawater, journeying out there and then returning back up, began um, to do what? Completing the cycle and the challenges on that journey back um, and then to mate and to die. And as Bobby returning back for nutrients in that ecosystem, having those eggs. The power of story, the power of story to be with you. And I just, in my story, it's different. My characters of Aristotle and Descartes and Salmon and Coyote and Burnt Face aren't your characters. But each of you have those inspirations, those nuggets, and will receive more in the future. Hold on to those. That's your story. And tell your story. The power of that story can, in fact, bring about change in the world. And so I thank all those teachers that have been part of my life, um, transforming it, and Leemlich, and oh gosh, um, and thank you so much.